are some promises brothers and sisters that God has for you and brothers and sisters we need to get we need to get with it we, we need to start examining what what are the promises of God and it takes faith brothers and sisters it takes faith to walk in it I don't know about y'all but my faith demands that I move in the will and the purpose of God that his glory is revealed through me who comes in the name of the Lord. Welcome to Faith Touch. I am elated that you have taken the time to join us today. Thank you so much. Today, Apostle's message is entitled, The Power of Faith. God uses those who expect to be used. Expecting God is then an act of faith. We expect God to use us, not because of who we are, but rather because of who he is. When we put our faith in God's great grace, then God will do great things in and through us. I believe this message will bless your hearts. Um, I want to talk to you today on the power of faith. The power of faith. How to have faith when nothing is left. What is faith, my brothers and sisters? I describe faith uh, from the acronym of the word faith, fulfilling action in the heart. Another acronym for faith is forsaking all, I trust him. Are you all in the room? Okay, I'll, I'll repeat those. Uh, what is faith? Uh, faith is, I describe from the acronym F-A-I-T-H, fulfilling action in the heart. It is with the heart man believes, and it is with the mouth confession is made unto righteousness. Uh, the word uh, faith also has another acronym that perhaps you may have or may not have heard before. Forsaking all, I trust him. I love that. The Bible declares faith in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 uh, like this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, brothers and sisters, faith is the medium by which the power of God is made visible. Faith, I repeat, is the medium by which the power of God is made visible. It moves mountains, heals the sick, and is the means of entrance into the kingdom of God. If you're writing, faith, my brothers and sisters, is the currency of heaven. It is a belief system. It is 
a belief system of the supernatural abilities of God as almighty and all powerful. So let's examine the power of faith today, my brothers and sisters, as we talk about this very important subject. I believe more than ever before, my brothers and sisters, that the saints of God ought to be in an understanding like never before of what it takes, my brothers and sisters, to maintain their walk with God. More than ever before, my brothers and sisters, we will be challenged in our walk with God. And for those of us who will understand what it takes, we must grab an understanding of faith. Because there are seasons that will arise in your life, my brothers and sisters, in which you would be on the edge of quitting. Even though we have arrived into 2018, and brothers and sisters, I believe 2018, as I said before, is pregnant with expectations. The Lord has already released to us that we have a fresh opportunity, my brothers and sisters, to move into a season of manifestation like never before. However, my brothers and sisters, I believe that the enemy's desire and his plans is that you would never walk in it. You've got to get radical. My brothers and sisters, shall I tell you that the one thing that you have that is able to combat all of the forces of the enemy is your faith. There is no, uh, there, there is no greater power, my brothers and sisters, than to have the power of faith working in your life that will give you the power Indeed, to cause the enemy to back up. Faith has disability. Are y'all in the room? Uh, they sang the song, let me tell you how to move a mountain. Some of us have mountains right now. And I want to suggest to you that mountains don't like the sound of faith. Faith, my brothers and sisters, is the very essence of your beginnings. And it will be the essence of your end. Our journey is a journey of faith. Brothers and sisters, and if it is a journey of faith, you and I would be well to understand what it, what, what it takes to make this journey and to be steadfast in your walk with God. Let's look at some facts. I call it facts from the word of God. Ephesians 2 and verse 8 says these words. For by grace you have been saved. Watch this. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Hit your neighbor and say neighbor. Let's fade it now. There is no means, no other means by which, my brothers and sisters, you could receive the joy of the Lord in your hearts. The scripture is clear. Paul says to the Ephesian saints, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And pay attention to this, because when I read this, you have been. I see two essence at work here. Not the, not the mere fact of when you came into the manifestation of of being saved, but the fact that before you even existed, brothers and sisters, hallelujah, the work was already done. Are you all hearing what I'm telling you? First, I think First Timothy, I think it is uh, one or, or one and nine declares by, uh, we were saved before uh, the earth began. What do you mean? I, I, I'm just trying to tell you something. That God, God, God foreordained, the scripture declares before uh, the world began, Jesus, Jesus was already crucified. He was already slain. And our faith brings us, my brothers and sisters, into the manifestation of what God has already have.
plan for us. For by grace you will have been saved through faith. And watch this. He says, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 records these words. And I love it. Talking about the power of faith. He says, therefore, having been justified by faith. Do you, do you hear the power in this? Faith justifies us. Therefore, having been justified by faith, look at what happens. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute here, saints. How do you, how do you live without faith? How do you live without faith? How do you not exercise your faith? How do you not develop your faith? How do you not desire, my brothers and sisters, to walk in faith? Because the scripture is clear. Having been justified by faith. Are there anybody in this room that know you've been justified? Amen. Watch. It says we have peace with God. Let me tell you all something. I've done some really, I mean, some really dumb stuff in life. Don't look at me strange because you did too. I've done some really dumb stuff in life. You know, dumb, dumb, dumb. You know? L let, me, let me tell you what, what's dumb. It's dumb when you, when you could do what you, 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 you could say out there and then come word up in God's face and, and start singing, playing guitar, hold the microphone and preach. You really dumb. Be because, brothers and sisters, we, we, we don't understand that we serve a holy God, a righteous God. Uh, you, did you hear what I just tell you? A God, brothers and sisters, that killed the, the sons, that killed the sons of Eli, brothers and sisters, because of wickedness. A God that killed the sons of Aaron. Uh, of Aaron because they sin wickedly outside the doors of the church. And I remind, I'm reminded of the fact that the Bible says he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I am just so thankful that I've been justified. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I sit up in here today, and I can tell you, brothers and sisters, as I stand here, that I had a good sleep last night because I've been justified. Anybody know you got peace with God? Because I've been justified. I don't have to struggle over my past sins. I don't have to stand up worried about what you're going to say about me. And you know the enemy puts some stuff on you when you're... Y'all know, the enemy just put some stuff on you. You know, just when you want to serve God, he brings all your past back to you. Yeah? And just when you, when, you, when you feel the call of God on your life, the enemy seeks to disqualify you. But look at verse number two, brothers and sisters. Uh, verse number two in, in this same chapter uh, excites me more. Through whom we also have access by faith. Back up. Let me back up. Let, let, let's read one. Let, let, let's, let's read one again. Because I need somebody to understand the, the, the power of where we are in 2018. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Go to verse number two now. It says, through whom we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And rejoice in the hope of the glory of of God. Help me a little bit here, Apostle, because you, you need, how is this significant? I need to tell you something. There are some things, my brothers and sisters, that you and I are sweating over that God has already, by his grace, provided for us. <laughs> are you all in the room? This is why Jesus tells his disciples, he says, listen, I, I don't want you to be struggling over what you should eat or what you should wear huh? or how you should live. Because your heavenly father, he's got all this in his hands. He got this stuff covered already. Are you all in the room? 
He, he knows exactly because, and this is why uh, I'm excited about David, because this fellow declares the Lord is my shepherd. And with that declaration, he says, I shall not want. Brothers and sisters, when you get an understanding of faith, it changes everything about your life. I don't know. Sometimes the, uh, uh, you have circumstances that will arise in your life, brothers and sisters, that make you uh, wonder if God is still on the throne. You wonder, brothers and sisters, whether you still uh, is still worthy to give God a praise. But I need to tell you, when you have an understanding of faith, you will understand, brothers and sisters, that God's grace is keeping you despite the circumstances that you're dealing with. Amen. Are you all hearing me? In, in other words, I'm telling you, why, while you gloating over broke days, God has already prepared wealthy days. Yeah. Are you all in the room? Why are you crying over your sick body? God has already, brothers and sisters, by his grace, he has already set healing in place. Grace, brothers and sisters, has provided that the everything, watch. Oh my God. Grace has already provided for us that everything that we need, everything that we need, brothers and sisters, God has already provided. See, y'all going to make me jump up and, and go and show you this thing right now. Huh? You, you, you're going to make me jump because I feel the Holy Ghost tell me, go ahead because somebody, somebody don't really understand. Let's go there, Fally. Let's go there. Let's go there. It wasn't, in the, it wasn't in the script for today, but it'll be a bonus for somebody. And it'll change the way you are operating. Watch this. Second Peter chapter... 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you all in the room? Watch what he says. Verse number 3. As his divine power has given to us all things. Are you all in the room? Everybody shout all things. All things. Everybody shout all things. all things. Listen what it says. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and Godliness. Watch this. It says to what? Life and what? So God ain't just want you up here shouting and speaking in tongues and getting all, you know, all snotty and, and deep. He also wants you to live. Are you all here? Because some folk think God ain't want you to live. We, some people really believe when you, when you accept Jesus Christ in your life, you come into bondage. Well, I agree with you on one hand, but I don't agree with you with your understanding. In other words, what do you mean when I say I agree? I agree that it's bondage for me. What do you mean? I'm talking about it's a bondage of, of holiness. I come in. See, I become a slave of righteousness. Are you all in the room? Which means when I come into Christ, I, don't know long, I no longer want to do the things of the world. I no longer want to look like the enemy. I want to look like Christ. So I make myself, this is what the scripture says, I make myself a slave of righteousness. Because there are benefits for the righteous. Are you all in the room? And that's why Jesus says, if you're coming after him, see, this is what your faith demands. That everyone, he says, you will have to deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. All, watch, watch this. All his, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us, watch this, by glory and virtue. Your life is not an ordinary life. You, 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 you have been called by glory, brothers and sisters, and you have been called by virtue. Can I go on a little further? Just verse 4, and I don't think I want to go any further than this. Watch this. By which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Pause there for a second. Hit your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Tell him, don't sweat the part. God already has it for you. There are some promises, brothers and sisters, that God has for you. And brothers and sisters, we need to get, we need to get with it. We, we need to start examining what, what are the promises of God. And it takes faith, brothers and sisters. It takes faith to walk in it. Are you all in the room? The word says, by which has been given to us exceedingly great, 
to give unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Amen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I don't know about y'all, but my faith demands that I move in the will and the purpose of God. That his glory is revealed through me. Can I tell y'all. This is our time and this is our season. And guess what. All God is waiting on is for you to crank up your engine and get moving. Are y'all here? Let me give you some more faith scriptures. I want to give you some more faith scriptures so you understand uh, what's happening. I'm, the, I'm, I'm, the, I'm building something for you. Hebrews 11 and verse 1, and we quoted it already, says, Now faith is the what? The substance of things hoped for. Brothers and sisters, without, without, without faith, you, you, you have no hope. You have no hope, and all of the promises uh, become, becomes null and void for you. What do you mean? They exist. They're in place for you, but you can't walk in what you don't believe. Remember, we declared that faith is a belief system. And you have to change your belief system, brothers and sisters. I, I have to change my belief system. I woke up this morning, and I woke up with expectations in my mind and in my heart. And now, brothers and sisters, expectations, it says, is the breeding ground for miracles. Well, how am I going to have miracles? How am I going to have manifestation if after I woke up, and a little struggle came. I start looking at the struggle, getting down, feeling sorry for myself, complaining, whining, agreeing with my circumstances. Hello. Rather than, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, I'm declaring none of these things move me. Fate puts you in that mode where you understand that something greater is happening for me. Are you all in the room? Yes. Something greater than what I'm going through. And that's why we never focus on what you're going through because it's where you're going to. Are you all in the room? If you focus on what you're going through, I tell you, you will destroy all kind of people along the way. Are you all here? Yes, if, 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 watch, watch, watch. If, if, I, if, if Jesus had focused on the hunger that was in his belly, the devil would have had a field day. And you and I would not have been sitting in here saved by grace today. The devil, and, and this is strange. And see, you all got to understand. I want to show you uh, uh, how, how, how important it is to, to maintain your faith. Brothers, how important it is to understand your faith. And brothers and sisters, like never before, to walk in faith. I wasn't going to go here, but I can show you when I declared this. See, let, let me go to Matthew chapter 4. Go to Matthew chapter 4 and, 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 and verse 1. Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Let's go. <laughs> and after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterwards, he was hungry. Here's the first challenge. Now the tempter came to him. He said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be bread. The enemy will challenge your identity, brothers and sisters. And if you don't have faith, you will fall for it. Are you all, are you all in the room? What are you saying? I'm saying the faith that keeps you grounded, that causes you to not give in to your appetite. I'm not just talking about food. Some of us have an appetite. <laughs> Some of us have an appetite for foolishness. Some of us have an appetite for slothfulness. We have an appetite for complacency. We have an appetite to complain. You have, I'm serious. I, I got to say it. Some of us, brothers and sisters, we're living in this zone where we just believe that nothing good could happen for us. You need to hit somebody next to you and tell them, neighbor, your promises are great. The power of faith will help you strengthen your confidence in God's promises and it will prepare you for those times when God calls upon you 
to move mountains. For a copy of this message in its entirety, please call our media ministry, 341-0502, and place your order today. Neighbors and friends, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to our 8 a.m. morning glory service every Sunday morning in the, in the sanctuary. That service is in progress right now, but certainly it is not too late to join us in our 10.30 a.m. divine worship service. Until next time, this is our year of kingdom expectations and manifestation. Be blessed. When life, my brothers and sisters, when life is restricted by physical barriers, it's limited. It's not abundant. God's plan was that Jesus would come to give us back our original state and brothers and sisters ultimately crush all barriers. Breaking barriers for God's glory tells us about the importance of tearing down the walls that separate us from God and from others. In this message series, we will learn the keys to breaking barriers in our hearts and replacing them with bridges that connect us to God. The enemy specializes in erecting barriers, not only to hamper, not only to delay, not only to frustrate, but to totally destroy. For a copy of this message and other ministry products, call us at 3410502 or 9543815204. I invite you to visit our website, ufmi.org, to purchase this powerful teaching resource today. Thank you for listening to our program today. For prayer, counseling, or encouragement, please call us, 341-0502. Send us an email, united.faith at yahoo.com. Or like us on Facebook, United Faith Ministries International. We would be delighted to hear from you. Wishing to join us? Meet us at our sanctuary at number 126 Fire Trail Road East every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for our morning glory worship service and 10.30 a.m. for our divine worship service. For all other service times and broadcast schedules, please visit our website, www.ufmi.org. On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Falman Ferguson, and the family of United Faith Ministries International, thank you for sharing with us. Join us next week right here on this station, and may the Word of God richly dwell in you.